Now let us understand about the external morphology of frog. The size of the frog varies in the same species depending upon the age of the individual. Moreover, frog has streamlined body that helps them to swim in water. As it can be seen from the figure, the dorsal side, that is the color of the body of the dorsal side is green with black spots present, but ventrally it is lighter. The body is divided into two parts, that is head and trunk. No, but true neck and tail is absent. The anterior most part of the head consists of nostrils. Moreover, it consists of literally protruding eye. On the mid dorsal line, in between two eyes, there is a brown spot. This mid ear is represented by a tympanic membrane. On the ventral side, a mouth is seen. The trunk bears two pairs of limbs, that is, fore limbs and hind limbs. Four limbs present in the front are short and consist of four fingers. On the contrary, hind limbs which are present back are long and consist of five fingers. Or toes. Toes of hind limb are connected by webs which help the animal in swimming. Thus, ankle, foot, toe all comprises of hind limb and forearm fingers comprise and hand comprises of four limbs. Apart from that, Rana tigrina also exhibits sexual dimorphism character. That is the phenomenon in which two sexes, that is male and female are entirely different that is both externally and internally morphological. During breeding season frog exhibits various characters there are a few characters which are different both in male and female. For example Male. In male, two vocal sacs are present. On the contrary, in female, vocal sacs are absent. Nuptial pair. Is present. In the finger index. However, such pads are absent in females. The abdominal region in males is narrow and flat. But in females, the abdominal region is broad and bulged. However, during breeding season, the male frog 
changes or shows dark yellow colored skin. However, during such season, female frogs do not change the color. This figure represents the sexual dimorphism in frog and the difference between male and female frog. The male frog possesses natural pad and vocal cells, pad, which is absent in female frog. Now we will understand about the skin of the frog. The frog skin is moist, slimy, and without any exoskeleton. The moist nature of skin is due to the presence of mucus. This figure represents the vertical section of the skin of a frog. As it can be seen from the figure, the frog skin basically consists of two layers. Outer epidermis and inner dermis. The outer epidermis is made up of several layers of epidermal cells. However, this epidermis is further divided into two type parts stratum cornea and and stratum germinativum. This stratum corneum forms the outer layer and the other stratum germinativum forms the inner layer. Stratum corneum is made up of single layer of cells. which are dead and shed periodically. On the contrary, in stratum germinatum, it is made up of columnar cells. New cells are also formed from this layer. This was all about outer layer epidermis. Now the inner layer is made up of or is called dermis. It also consists of two layers. The outer portion stratum sporangium and the inner portion stratum compactum. The stratum sporogesium stratum sporogesium is the outer layer and it consists of loose network of epithelial cell. Connective tissues Blood vessels and mucus gland.
This was about the outer layer stratum sporangiosum. The inner layer stratum compactum is made up of dense connective tissue and smooth muscle fibers. along with nerves and blood vessels. This was all about the vertical section of frog and its multilayer structure. Basic function of skin includes First, it gives shape and texture to the body. Second, it protects the body against foreign bodies and fungi. Third, it acts as a chief respiratory organ. Fourth, it acts as an important sensory organ. And last but not least, it acts or it does not drink water. But absorbs through skin. This was all about the external morphology characters of frog. Now let us understand about the internal morphology.